Well, Green Party leader, leader Elizabeth May was one of those uh, party leaders who was in the meeting to talk about francophone uh, rights and services today. Uh, good to see you again. It's great to see um, you. So what happened at the meeting? Well, it was the, like I said, first of all, it's the first time we've ever had a meeting like that. And I have to say, I, I, when, uh, when Stephen Harper was prime minister, there was an occasion where he wanted to speak to every leader and we met individually. So mm -hmm. I met with Stephen Harper, everything we talked about was we agreed would be confidential. So when a prime minister asks you for a meeting, it's kind of unusual as an opposition party leader. But this is, I don't know how, how many years it's been, if ever, that a prime minister has had all the opposition leaders together in one room to discuss an issue where we all agreed. Right. So uh, we uh, made it very clear that and we, the entire meeting was, was in French, which was appropriate. Melanie Jolie joined us, of course, the minister responsible and the prime minister. And we all agreed that we have to protect the rights of the francophone minority across Canada and particularly concerned with Ontario right now because of Ford's cuts. I also raised I'm concerned about New Brunswick because of the rise mm -hmm. of a party that doesn't like francophone rights. Uh, we talked about the various things we might be able to do. It was all constructive and all quite positive. Okay, all of this comes in the wake of the uh, the Doug Ford decision to yeah. reduce some French services in Ontario. So uh, my understanding is that Andrew Scheer asked for the meeting with the Prime Minister earlier in the week. The Prime Minister then, you know, uh, broadened the tent as it were yeah. and invited all the party leaders. So uh, other than all being all on the same page that you need to look after francophone rights acro across the country, anybody have any concrete ideas of how you do that? Well, in, in other words, yeah. is there a, a, a movement to speak out against what Doug Ford is doing in Ontario or to speak out against concerns uh, for the protection of francophone rights in New Brunswick or yeah. is it we maybe you'll continue to meet every week who knows <laughs> that wasn't on the table look we we uh, I think it helped Andrew Shear a bit rehabilitate his own stance on this because it was people from within his party that denied unanimous consent on a motion when Melanie Jolie put it forward initially that Doug Ford is, is cutting into francophone rights and we should all stand to protect the, uh, mm. the rights of Canadians in both official languages um, the meeting we all put forward some ideas. I mean, basically, Melanie Jolie reviewed all the things the government is already committed to doing to protect francophone rights, uh, funding for immersion programs, programs to uh, increase education opportunities, protect access to justice for people for whom French is their mother tongue, that they get access to justice. Uh, we put out a lot of other ideas. I think we were quite unified around the importance of having a francophone university in Ontario. Mm -hmm. That had been a decision. The money is in place for the federal government to support that, but the province needs to ask for those funds. So we were pretty clear about let's all go back and find ways to pressure the Ford government to ask for the funds that are there so that we can have a francophone university in Ontario. Interesting, because he's he's agreed to reinstate to some degree the, the French language as commissioner in Ontario right. under the office of the ombudsman there, but he's not backing down on not moving ahead with a francophone university in Toronto. Yeah. So that and came again, up with him. Did yeah. Andrew Shear say? Well, Andrew had some good ideas. Andrew said, look, there's a lot of federal government buildings that maybe you could find a way to offer to reduce the cost of coming up with a francophone university mm -hmm. in Ontario. I mean. We had a, um, you know, in some ways one could but say... But did Andrew Scheer agree that uh, when you say we, we all should pressure Doug Ford to, con you know, get that university uh, up and running, Andrew Ford's, uh, sorry, Andrew Scheer's agreed <laughs> to, to pressure Doug Ford to, to go ahead with a Francophone university? Did you hear that? Uh, yes. Okay. I think I did hear that. But certainly we all agreed that we were standing in solidarity, want to protect Francophone rights. I don't want to misquote anything mm -hmm. that Andrew said, but since he was offering concrete suggestions for ways in which the federal government could come forward with perhaps some buildings to help with this, but that we all agreed that we had to find ways to incur, and I, when I say we all agreed, when it was stated we all agree, Andrew didn't say no. So maybe silence is consent and maybe silence isn't. I guess you'd have to ask Andrew to be absolutely clear. Right. But I felt that we were all on the same page. And I know that uh, my uh, opposite number in Ontario, Mike Schreiner, who's leader of the Green Party of Ontario, is very concerned about this as well. So we need to find ways to, I mean, Ford's back down a bit, and he's, a, he's appointed Carol Mulroney to be in charge of francophone right. rights within the cabinet. I think he may have realized he misstepped, but to deny at this point when it's been moving along as well as it has having one university that's francophone in Ontario, there's several unilingual what, anglophone universities in Quebec, mm -hmm. and there's a quite strong francophone population in Ontario. We don't want to leave them uh, without this promised university. It's quite a blow. Yeah. Is, is there, um, um, 
this has been a partisan issue for the last couple of weeks. It's, it's uh, led to some fairly heated debates in the House of Commons and, yeah. and comments outside the House, and, and we've watched the debate in the province of Ontario. Uh, I'm not sure where you see this whole issue going, but we are heading into an election year, and yeah. everybody will be looking to make, you know, this is the way politics works. And is this an issue you think that you you saw a lack of partisanship around the table in the right. Prime Minister's office today? Can it continue, I guess is the well, question. Well, I have to say, if anyone had suggested in certain other eras in Canadian politics that a sitting Prime Minister with a majority government would invite the uh, official opposition as well as New Democrats, as well as the Bloc Québécois and the Green Party into an office and we all agreed on everything. I think that's in itself a kind of a symbolism that should send a message to the Ford government that the position they're taking is offside of everybody. Does that help? I don't know. Going into an election year, repoliticizing this from the meeting we just had, I think becomes increasingly difficult because it was such an amicable meeting because we said we're all agreed. We want to protect Francophone rights. Some people have suggested that uh, notwithstanding the idea of turning over perhaps some building space that the federal government might own in downtown Toronto for a campus, some people have suggested uh, the feds might just directly find the money for a Francophone university and sort of go right over Doug Ford's head. And that, that raises all kinds of yeah. <laughs> jurisdictional issues, I suppose. Did, did any of that come up? Yeah, we, we talked about augmenting funding in various programs, but the idea of, a, of the federal government building the whole thing didn't come up because of the concerns about stepping on provincial toes. So what they want to do is see pressure on the Ford government. I think we all want to see the Ford government apply for the funding that's there to get the federal government to come up with the money so the university can continue. But without the Ford government taking that first step, um, you know, who knows, down the road it could appear in a Liberal Party platform, we're prepared to go the whole way and build the whole thing. Not saying mm -hmm. that couldn't happen. I, we've been pressuring from the Green Party, uh, from both Mike Schreiner and myself, Green Party of Ontario and Green Party of Canada, that the, that the pilot project and guaranteed livable income should go ahead with the federal government picking up the full cost because Ontario has cut a program that was already quite far along. So I wouldn't say it's impossible that we'd say the same thing about a Francophone university. But the first step is, would Ford agree to apply for the federal money that's there and, and build the university as, as was planned originally? Lots to watch there. Now, so we had a certain, for a while, at least on Parliament Hill, till the nonpartisanship was in the air. And I'd be remiss if I didn't point out that love's in the air as well, because <laughs> <laughs> that's a terrible segue probably. Yeah, but yeah. I just want to say how, how wonderful it is to hear that, uh, you. that you're engaged and you've found someone special. And that's well, always a good day. John Kidder is more than special. I'm really, really lucky. And we're getting married on Earth Day. So uh, that you know, seems highly appropriate. It is highly yeah. appropriate. And uh, yeah, so I'm a happy camper. Well, great for you. I'm glad Thank to you. hear it and great to talk to you tonight. Thank you very much, Peter.